They drive three hours next weekend. We all sit around. We split these mushrooms. We sit there for an hour and a half, and nothing happens. This oh. man, that's his hustle. He sat there, and he sold his portobellas. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love when Pat feigns. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> Welcome aboard another brand spanking new episode of another Below Deck podcast. My name's Dylan. I'm saddled up next to my buddy, real Nicholas Davis. Ahoy, mateys! Patrick, the producer of the podcast, behind the glass over there. How you, how you doing, guys? How's the Pinot Grigio tonight, Pat? It's wonderful. Uh, it's got a scent of apple and strawberries. Mm. It's lovely. Apples and strawberries, huh? Oh, yeah. It's very fruity. Um, well, we got to get into the show now. Um, yes? Do you have a comment? I was mixing shows, I think. I just liked last week's effect when we could he- audibly hear Patrick Point pouring the Pinot, the Pinot Grigio. And then I realized it was the other property, another... Oh, beautiful, though. Oh, wow. That's gorgeous. And did, some ASMR. Did you just pour LaCroix into your wine? Oh, no. I actually emptied that can out while we were watching Below Deck. To hide the fact that I'm an alcoholic, I went into the bathroom and poured another bottle of Pinot Grigio in the can. Well, that's not true. Now and the it, cat's out of the bag. That can't be true. And if it is true, I am unbelievably sad and don't even want to continue with the podcast because we need to have a conversation the, the three of us the thing is you don't have to hide it we know you're an alcoholic but when you start hiding it that's what sounds the alarm yeah Pat. that's yeah. what makes us really really scared and concerned um also the track marks <laughs> uh, but anyways we got to get into the you you have like a weird birth defect there which plasma is, Got it. Uh, so, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, fan favorite segment, thoughts, knots. That's where we give our thoughts, and we also give our knots. Nick, not going to go to you first. I'm going to go to Pat first. Oh, thanks, Dylan. Kidding, I'm going to go to me first. Kidding again, I'm going to go back to Pat. Oh, thoughts wow. and knots. All right, okay, I'll keep it brief. I'll keep it brief. 50 knots. Yeah. Um, the episode was interesting only because I always like an antagonist. Uh, I hate this queen of a side bitch. What? Oh, I use that harshly. Didn't Who are you referring to? Oh, the Queen of Versailles. Oh, the Queen of Versailles, bitch. I thought you said side bitch or something like oh, that. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, there, I, I, I have some personal issues with her. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. She's I a goddamn the, nightmare. I saw the doc, and so it's nice to have her on the boat. Um, Nick, thoughts, nuts. I thought Patrick was really low on that one. Yeah. I thought this was the the best episode of the season. Wow. I thought it had all the the stuff we talk about, or at least the stuff I talk about. I like them going out, getting fucked up, shenanigans ensuing. Plus, it had all the good stuff on the boat. It had a new cast member. She's a weirdo. I'm going to be really, really, really high here. I'm gonna, the the sides are going to be busting off my ship. I'm going 82 knots. 82 knots. Good God. Good God. How dangerous is that? See an iceberg out there, you can't do anything about it. You're flying right into it. I bet the Titanic is going about 82 knots. Um, no, no. No. Kate, uh, the queen, the no, real. No, no, no. I think you're wrong and Kate's wrong. I think it probably was going about 82 knots. Mm-hmm. 1912, 82 knots, whatever it was. She said like 40 knots. Patrick, was like the speed Patrick, of sound. Patrick, we know. Patrick, we know. <laughs> <laughs> My thoughts, my knots. Um, you know, I was going to go much lower because I didn't think that it was a uh, an entertaining or engaging episode of television. But hearing your soliloquy right there, bump my knots up easy 10, 15. I'm going to give this thing 71 knots. 71. Yeah. Which puts them right, right about 61, 56 knots. So you were initially around Patrick's area. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, uh, and that's that, that. Those are the kind of secrets that math can unveil. Speaking of thoughts and knots, and our last episode, which was titled "Not a Good Episode." Yeah, did you know the below deck episode last week was? Are you a- doing this for real? Yeah. Oh my god! Did you know it had "not" in the title? Did you know that we had a conversation about the show having "not" in the title, and us being confused with why Patrick was saying it? Did you listen to the show, Nick? Oh, I forgot. You should have seen his eyebrows when you said that. They skyrocketed. <laughs> he was I, blown away. It, it definitely had uh, knots in the title of the episode and then anchors or something like knots believing it. This and is then not happening, anchor. anchors. Anchors, yeah, yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. Oh. Are you going to apologize? I'm sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, we need to uh, get into the episode. Uh, we're very excited to talk about it because we love this show so much. Um, last we left off, Jiao was uh, bumming everyone out um, by making Anastasia cry. Uh, do we want to talk about the particulars of this uh, altercation? I think we have to. It's a pretty yeah. pretty pivotal part of the episode. That's why I asked. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I asked. First off, it's unwarranted. Completely. Uh, Jay Wow, I haven't seen this behavior before. Now, mm. unfortunately, the baby barnacles, they got a lot of attitude in that fucking group of ours. <laughs> uh, I don't like them trying to correct us, okay? Uh, they pointed out that Jay Wow was a complete douchebag on uh, last season, and he's been hiding it this season. But in reality, he's the biggest jerk in the seas. And we were fools for not well, pointing that out. That was that's kind of on me. I mean, I'm supposed to be the, the Polaris, you know, uh, when it comes to all means last season. Jua was a complete dick, but we've made reference to the fact that he's a, a womanizer and I didn't buy that um, that Brooke cheated on him and stuff like that. But this is kind of concerning. Um, it's completely unfounded. I mean, he's saying that it's ridiculous that she made this choice based on ego as if like the crux of his, his angst is coming from she should have had the foresight to know that by her taking this job, she was taking a deckhand away from him. And that's ridiculous. Like, why would she ever make that decision? Now, like Dylan, that? I think that's an interesting uh, aspect of his vitriol towards her. But really, the fun part was when he was basically like, hey, you're a shit chef. Like, this is all a fucking joke. Wasn't that the real hurtful part? Yeah, it was. That's that's what made her upset. I'm right there with Hannah on this whole situation. Yeah. Nothing he's saying is incorrect. Uh, she's she's not a seven star chef. It, it it is as Patrick said a joke that she's been thrust into this position. But uh, there's a little thing called tact, a little mm -hmm. thing called bedside manner. We talked about it last week. I mean, I don't know why he's surprised. I don't know why he keeps saying, "Oh, so the honest person is getting in trouble." Well, yeah, what, what do you can't you can't be honest all the time. You have to have tact. And also, it's something that we never talk about on the show. But there's a little thing uh, called uh, positive reinforcement, which is maybe she's not. But what helps people get better is saying. Hey, I'm behind you. You're doing a great job. The odds are against you, but you're killing it, kid. All this being said, I'm saying how he should have acted in like a, a social situation, like how someone should act. To be honest, I'm glad. And this is going to sound a little cold hearted, but uh -oh. someone knocked Anastasia down a peg or two. Ooh. She is she is sounding so Ooh. annoying every Ooh. step of the way. Oh. And she just gets worse and worse and worse. All right. We'll get there. Not mad at that take. Not well, mad hold at that on. Take. I'm not done with this take. Nick, I love that take. And well, I Pat, remember, this is the first minute and 20 seconds of the show. So, well, I like it when we front load. OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, drinking her own juice. I don't like this. She's all bought into her own self worth as now a chef she's bossing people around and he has to sit there <laughs> okay. chug a couple fucking uh, you know, long island iced teas in france listen to this bag of bullshit and sit there with his arms crossed and and not say anything no let her have it how'd you know his favorite drink i like to say in this situation he played what larry david in curb your enthusiasm made famous social assassin. he played the role of the social assassin it's lol not, jeff lol it's not gonna be pleasant but sometimes you gotta correct people all right when i get into ubers and they smell like bo i i, I on my way out of the uber i'm like hey here's a tip for you buddy the reason you're a 4.71 is because it smells like shit in here dude and then i sprint away so weird that you said that because i walked into a convenience store today to pay for overpriced nicotine pods because i'm violently addicted to them and it smelled like shit in the convenience store and i walked in and i told the clerk i say it smells like absolute shit in here man and he said what <laughs> i said it smells like shit in here he said what does it smell like i said like shit and cheese <laughs> And that wasn't comfortable for anyone. No, it, it had wasn't. to be done because you like him. You're the one that cares about he him. He was not happy with me. He had a fucking mile and a half long stare. What is that the saying? Mile and a half long stare? That's it. Um, let's get to uh, nightlife, please. Not quite. Not quite. <laughs> what? Oh. I want to do a show. I want to be the John Taffer of Ubers. I want to be called Uber Rescue. And I'm going to oh, nice. get in there and I'm going to dilate everything you have wrong. Oh, you have a center con console that pulls down to give me a cup holder ah that's gonna dock you a tenth of a point all right yeah. sir uh you're you're listening to 
uh, talk radio in another language. Ooh, that's about three tenths of a pen point right there, right? We're, we're gonna talk make radio you, in yeah. another language. It's I, a real, it's a real epidemic. I don't know if you're really uh, encapsulating the the thrust of of John Taffer. No, you're blowing it. You haven't seen me when I get fired up. I'll I'll, I'll show them my wrath. You curse at strangers. I will if it stinks <laughs> and they don't have a cup holder. All right, we got to get to the nightlife. Um, Asia is cutting up. A rug. There she is. And Joao says something uh, truly horrifying. I mean, really scary stuff. No need for this. <coughs> no need for this whatsoever. I was con- kind of confused by it. Is he just, is he an angry drunk? I mean, some of us are happy drunks. I'm obviously one of those guys. Some people get angry and aggressive and hateful. Yeah. He's definitely one of those fucking guys. Yeah, it's this weird like cauldron of like evil goop just like bubbling up at the surface. Like fucking Ghostbusters. Totally. Like this this line, we should get to the line. I mean, she's she's doing a little uh, twerking on Jack and he says, "You are so horish. It's disgusting." What the wow. fuck? And I feel like she didn't make enough of it. Like she was like, "He's like judging me for how I'm dancing." <laughs> Jesus Christ, putting it lightly. You said you're so whorish, you're disgusting. Where were some of these uh, quote unquote men, Jack or Travis, step step up? I wish he would have gotten punched in the face. They that were was too wasted, but that yeah. was horrible. That yeah. totally did deserve it. It was so loud in the there. I, I don't think anybody actually heard it. I don't think she heard it either, yeah. Um, but I will say, I, I'm not defending this asshole, Jay Wow. I will say, though, I think his anger was geared more towards Lazy Jack than her no. i don't think he was happy no. seeing jack uh get his uh, uh, tw- uh his getting torqued no i think it was directed at her because he said you're so whorish it's <laughs> disgusting so i think it was pretty much directed at her this is this sounds like something that would come out of mila's mouth but mm, i don't know joao it was a little surprising i didn't mm-hmm. think he would go this far i, I feel like the only way it could have been more directly directed <laughs> at asia asia you're so whorish it's disgusting you took the words out of my mouth i'm so sorry I <laughs> no 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 it was good okay, it was good right. it was good <laughs> God, we're such good friends. Um, <laughs> all right. So while this is happening, uh, tra- uh, well, actually, probably minutes later, Travis and uh, Lazy Jack end up sitting in the corner, and they just talk about how much they fucking hate uh, right. Jay Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that'll carry on. They, they, I'll get to it later. They're very, they're frustrating the hell out of me. Um, but those two, those, yeah. those two slackers. Me yep. too. Like yep. we've said it. There's a fine line. You can be fun, yep. but but just carry your weight. And Travis just gets his nose into every situation he feels like he has to be the moral uh right uh, moral pol- what do we, what do we call that what's the term for that you know you guys know what i'm talking about the moral, the moral authority. authority yeah the moral uh, authority that is what i was looking well, for well let's talk about travis really quickly he's leaving the club and he throws a stool at a uh i don't know like one of those aluminum pull downs that uh people have on the outside of shops mm-hmm. uh very loud and a- also something that could it could bristle some people. Like if you're at a nightclub and you do that and the wrong person standing out there, I mean, you could get into a fight over that shit. Joao, I think Joao is disgusting for calling Asia uh, whorish and disgusting, but I don't think that what he did to Travis was that bad. It's like, calm down. You're being a fucking moron right now. You can't throw stools at buildings. Thank God he didn't see Travis try and make out with Hannah. Um, what kind of judgment would have been uh, yeah. would have been uh, put down upon him for that? By the way, let me bring this up because you skipped over it, Dilly. Uh, Travis did, in fact, try and stick his tongue down Hannah's uh, yes, throat he did. during the nightclub thing. I, I just have to say this: the way that she handled this is, I think she kind of gently pushed him away and said, "Oh, I behave, th- behave," yeah. and then smiled and laughed it off. Uh, this is where I bring out international waters. I know we're not on water now. We're in France. But uh, this whole community of these yachties, Hannah, they, you get away with murder there. Hannah's not going to – I don't I don't think that she really likes Travis. You can tell when they ask for the double date. There's a couple that's very excited about it and a couple that's not. The delivery kind of was flubbed, but we'll get there. But Hannah is – She's no hussy. I mean, you guys don't remember, but last season she was with a guy pretty much the entire time, and they didn't have sex until the very last night when they were like on the rocks. I don't. It, was she, it hot? They had sex on the rocks. All right, guys. Um, so they go home. But no, I had a thing about Hannah. Yeah. Even though she pulled away, I don't think. I think she liked it. Even though she doesn't want to kiss him, I think she, she she just likes the attention. It's fun. She literally had no problem. Even though you were saying she handled it well, it's because she didn't she didn't mind it. And uh, 
almost like encouraging him to like try again. Yeah, he's a fun fella. He's got some sandy uh, uh, brown blonde hair. Um, I don't want to get us in trouble. Uh, but I, I, you know, this was a. a, a Sounds different... like you're gonna get us in trouble. Well, uh, I kind of like this workplace environment, party and after work environment. A little Mad Men, you know, that a good show on AMC. You know, we don't. Oh, have the that one dis- where the women couldn't do anything and they slapped them on the ass and drank all day. Just as recently, you got a problem with that? <laughs> just as recently as the 1990s in some high corporate environments, I just recently uh, had a chance to hear Jordan Belfort uh, speak, and mm. wow, it sounded like an absolute fuck fest. He was mm. like, you, "There are uh, talk about the Wolf of Wall Street, the Wolf of Wa- Wall Street, the Wolf of Wall Street." <laughs> right. Yeah, correct. Right. Uh, there were secretaries <laughs> being taken into closet consent consensually <laughs> and just getting uh, taken to Pound Town. Getting taken to Pound Town, huh? <laughs> Nick Davis. <laughs> Nick fucking Davis, man. I, 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 the reason I use such crass terms is because I wanted to illustrate that it was a free-for-all, <laughs> just like it was in the 60s. Not much had changed. Yeah, had no, do. I got it. <laughs> uh, so they leave. I just wanted to note, there's a fun car, and then there's like a townspeople from flash dance car like there's the, the, the <laughs> one with colin and joao and hannah is so lame and yes. the other one is so fun yeah colin <laughs> and joao oh man i you literally it, it i just wanted to compare them to wet blankets it's two wet blankets oh, yeah. in a car oh yeah two but wet i wanted to do i wanted hannah. to do it like too many steps like take a couple of blankets take out a jug of water and just soak them up i would have said something like that but then i was like that's not good that would have been great would it yeah, if you stuck the landing. Oh, uh, yeah, well, I didn't. For shame. Um, okay, so wild night. Absolutely wild night. But, alas, they wake up in the morning after destroying their livers. Pat? Uh, okay, uh, so here's the thing. It's 2.30 when they get back to the boat. I don't understand how this works. Uh, you have a job to do the next day. This is the most important day. where you're Manual labor. Meeting guests. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why would you go out and get trashed on this night knowing that in five hours you need to wake up and have your fucking shit together? My uh, my main issue is I, I don't think you guys should go out on this specific night. Wait for like when you got two days off so you can nurse a hangover the whole next fucking day. Right. Um, and the work does, you know, suffer a little bit. Uh, Joao is very, very um, remorseful the next morning. He knows that he messed up. There's there's a term for it. Drinker's remorse. Oh, you just wake up just with that, you're like, uh-oh, what'd I do? <laughs> <laughs> I've never had it, clearly. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Um, Joel says that he uh, cannot rule with an iron fist because of what he did last night. He ruffled the feathers of Jack and Travis, and now he cannot be as direct as he wants to be with them. Uh, no, you can. You 1,000% can. Uh, Dill, I'm going to have to correct you on that. I believe what what he was torn between was he felt like he's their boss and he's been a little too friendly, a little too buddy-buddy with them, and now they're taking advantage of it. I don't think so. Mm. I need you to weigh in because I think he's the wrong take. How did you say it? I said that he messed up last night, so he can't be as direct and overbearing as he wants to be. It's definitely Dylan's thing. Thank you. And what I'm saying is, you're the boss. You're not here to make friends. They're beneath you, and they work for you. So if they're supposed to be on deck at 10 a.m., and they're in bed slowly putting their shirts on, yell at them and tell them to move faster. But it's such a it's such a like a high school type atmosphere. You don't want they just don't want to be put in that p- position where seven weeks they're hated. You know, yeah, no, no but, one wants to be Caroline. Yeah, but mm-hmm. you know what's worse? What Joao does tonight, where he's like sucking up to Travis, and Travis like the second Joao leaves the room, he's like, "What a fucking wank of that guy!" Is, <laughs> yeah, huh? yeah. It's like he lost the war. Just make them work. Mm-hmm. True, um, true. Anastasia. Still seems a little taken aback by this whole chef thing before we get to the preference. Are you talking about all the fucking gloating? Well, I mean, you you brought something up when we were watching. I Um, would like her to be taken down a peg or two. (laughs) Okay, let's get to the preference sheet meeting. Uh, We've got Jackie Siegel. She's a socialite, and uh, Pat knows a tremendous amount about her. (laughs) 
All right. I know some stuff. Uh, may is this a safe space? Am I in a trust tree here where I can uh, say my opinion? So well, the- yeah, I mean, outside people who listen to the show can still say that we're uh, made up of pure evil and <laughs> hatred. But yeah, it's a safe space. Okay, 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 okay. Because uh, I have some opinions. So, baby barnacles, if you don't want to hear the truth, just fast forward. I guess forty five <laughs> seconds. Uh, but I'm going to lay my thoughts, and they're my opinions only. I just want to let the baby barnacles know. 45 seconds seems a little light. Might want to buffer that with 45 on the on the opposite end. Maybe you'll be in the clear. I'm going to say this is about four minutes. <laughs> okay. I'm guessing. Pat, let's run it to about 60. Here we go. Uh, this lady from Florida, pageant queen, married a fucking Oof. prime source of wealth involved in sucker, suckering filthy, yucky normies Slicks from her. cold places into predatory timeshare deals, bad loans, essentially... Getting uh, 18 people to all sign off on owning a fucking condo. That's how the Queen of Versailles made money. It's like Not a pyramid her, scheme light. A pyramid scheme. We saw that. We saw bits of it in the in the documentary. Her husband's a scumbag. He's a womanizer. He's definitely having sex with multiple women behind her back. If we peel back the, the curtain on this, we know that he's having multiple affairs. She's spending all his money, but that's not the worst of it. Why I have a problem with the Queen of Versailles, and again, this is going to offend some people, is She's her- overweight. No, no, okay. no. Much worse. Her daughter uh, died of an overdose for opiates about three years ago. Uh, the Queen of Versailles went through all her diaries and decided that she would take her daughter's diaries and then print them as a book and then go on a tour for the last year uh, talking about how Whoa. she didn't overdose, but she was suffering from depression because she met a bad guy. So not only is she in denial about her own bad mothering so that she raised a fucking drug addict, wow. she's blaming it on a bad relationship and not really taking in that her daughter died of a fucking drug overdose and then printing her own diaries. Jesus. I think that's pretty disgusting. So, uh, by the way, if you guys are back, I'm done uh, uh, giving my opinion. Holy shit. Dylan nailed it, by the way. That was was a minute 30 on the nuts. Knew it. Uh, Mm -hmm. But that is... Absolutely, absolutely disgusting. Like, yeah, there's <laughs> what a bomb you just dropped. Oh, thanks. I'm sure we're gonna get a bunch of one star reviews for this. Why probably. would we get one stars about like you didn't you didn't say? Anything. I think because women will probably say that. How dare you judge a mother and her okay. mothering and I think then all we that might other. get one stars for that. But, um, <laughs> all right, let's get to the preference sheet. Uh, we've got a lot of demands from this uh, this Jackie. Uh, we need a blow up doll birthday. We need a picnic atop Ez. We have a celebration of life dinner that we're going to um, to be throwing. I mean, good. We're going to read excerpts from the journal. Ugh, <laughs> horrifying. That doc sounds like a bummer. Why are all docs bummers? Well, this one was good because you got to see a bunch of self entitled rich uh, people get taken down a peg. And I, you know what? That one on Alex Harnold or whatever the the mountain climber that wasn't a bummer doc. That was very inspiring. A little long. Didn't need a didn't need the info about him and his girlfriend. Just wanted to see him climb. Oh, are, are we talking about uh, the one that just won best uh, best, best doc? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's a little weirdo, and he'll be dead in three years. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh yeah, I think he'll die very very soon. What was he called? Free? Uh, free solo. Free solo. Free solo. Free solo. And also, um, I don't know. Does Planet Earth count as a documentary? Because yeah. wow, the wonder that is. Oh. I can't watch Planet Earth. Why? You don't like seeing animals eat each other. Yeah, I can't do it. It makes me too sad. It makes me really really sad in when the I really- see an animal get taken out. In the really early Planet Earth, there's not a ton of death. There's actually some some really incredible escapes. Now Planet Earth is really tainting their brand, I will say. The first one took 10 years to film. Now mm-hmm. they're seem to be pumping right. out a new hour Oh, the dog week. should yeah, be called yeah. Watch Animals Eat Each Other. <laughs> yeah, no, really. it's really, really sad stuff. You know, this this one time I was watching a, uh, one of those nature docs with my father and uh, a female, I think it was a leopard or a cheetah or something like that. Uh, they, her cubs had been eaten in the night while she was away hunting uh, for them and she came back and they were gone and she started meowing all night, howling, meowing for them. Sad. I. I cried my eyes out. I, I just can't do it. I can't watch stuff like that. Uh, if I was a cameraman, I'd go over there and I go, "Hey, uh, what what ate him?" Uh, I, ca- I don't know. I'm oh, the coyote! Sure. I'd shoo him away. I go, right. "Hey, we'll get this later on with some CGI." <laughs> yeah, okay, me too. If I was one of those cameramen, they'd be like, "All right, number one mandate: you can't interact with nature. It's a butterfly effect. If you do, 
You can't do it. I'd be like, got it. I would start firing off rounds. Anything that came close to these beautiful animals, like a hyena. I'd shoot a hyena if it was trying to take down like a gazelle or something. I think it is glaringly obvious why both of you are not camera <laughs> operators for Planet Earth. And I would say give it a chance. I, I, this sounds cliche, but my absolute favorite pastime in college was just to get as high off my mind. I bought a plasma TV with my student loan money. Oh, plasma. And I would just love to get high by myself and watch some Planet Earth. It is riveting. Did you pepper any uh, masturbation in there? I would say like wait before I before. like to I like to be in a, a state of extreme relaxation <laughs> yeah. when I watch Planet Earth. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Um, all right. So what shall we get to next? Um, any highlights you guys want to jump? Oh through? yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, all right. So this is you know I'm not a big fan of uh, the Queen of Versailles. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> before we get to the the new stew, uh, Jiao gives the uh, the the filthy scows our punch list. It's a long list, and uh, Jack says that. He, first, he complains about how long it is, and then he says, okay, and then he says, this is going to take, or no, he says, I'm going to deliberately take the entire day to do all of this. Mm-hmm. I just fucking hate this guy. I get that he's funny. I get that he'd be a great hang at the pub for a Liverpool game, but yucky, you can never, yucky, I don't like you. You can never respect this guy. I hope this is just a shtick for TV, but you can't respect a guy who prides himself in laziness. Yeah, uh, And disgusting. gets off on it. Like, I'm going to do as little as I can. Yeah. I will say you misquoted him. All he said was like, all the stuff he had on... No, that was no, later. Later on, no, oh. later on, he, he actually like, says, I'm, I'm basically, uh, my plan is to do nothing. Well, I yeah. apologize. I thank you very much because I was about to go fucking berserk. <laughs> Uh, I would like to watch a uh, foot, footy game with uh, with Jack, though, at the pub. Oh, yeah, yeah, it'd be a good time. Okay, so the new Stu gets on board. Um, her name's June. She's going to be the third Stu. What are your guys' initial thoughts? Stone her eyes. Jesus Christ. I mean, it is so crazy. She's walking through the boat. She seems very, very beautiful, put together, like she's going to be a solid uh, employee. And she may very well be. I mean, they're very high-functioning stoners. But then they cut to the uh, OTFs or in the moments or uh, personal interviews, the talking heads. And she seems like she is baked out of her goddamn mind. (laughs) I have nothing to add. She looks very high. Uh, I mean, her eye, it's like a just like... It's just a slit. Yes, uh, two slits. Mm. It seems weird. Like I don't know how she got the pot over there. I'm convinced that she's got a some some piece of high technology, some some high technology marijuana device on that boat that she's secretly puffing at. Because boys, you you know that I'm not filthy uncultured swine like you. I've traveled the world. <laughs> like me, Nick. Like you, Nick. Um, I've been to Nice and I've tried to purchase weed in Nice, and it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. You have to stumble upon a breakdancing crew in the middle of the square oh. and uh, talk to them about where they come from and slowly and slowly build up to the point where they offer to sell you a little log of hash that you can't really smoke. I mean, how do you really smoke hash? But that's kind of how it goes in Nice, baby. Mm. I tried buying Coke in Peru last year. Yeah. And I, I found a guy in, a, in an alleyway. He had a, what do you call like a piece of an uh, elephant's uh, tusk? And it threw his fucking nose like a oh, yeah, like a like Flintstone a septum piercing, yeah. And I was like, "This is my guy." Yeah. Turns out, baking soda. Rip me off. I got baking soda. I knew you were got do that. Baking soda. Can I really quickly? I'll tell it so fast. It's the most ingenious drug <laughs> ripoff story ever. We were in Mardi Gras, New Orleans. Some kid was walking around. He had a bunch of acid on him. We all wanted to do acid because we were wasted. It was one o'clock in the morning. We were like, "Let's do some acid." He had pieces of paper perforated. Eight and a half by 11. He was selling a square for 20 bucks. There was nothing on the paper. He was turning a fucking piece of white paper into a thousand into a thousand dollars. Genius. That sounds like a motivational like speech. You know what I could do with this? Can I one up you though with a with a drugstore? <laughs> Absolutely, of course. <laughs> We've all got one, and who gives a shit? The show is yeah, meaningless. Right, absolutely. So, Thank you for listening. It's Nick's College Stories Day, my very first day up at uh, University of Minnesota. We're waiting to take the bus back to our campus because there's two campuses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we're waiting at a bus stop. Uh, me and a couple guys I had met that night at a party. Oh. And we, there's a homeless man there on the bench, and he, he was like, oh, you guys seem like you're trying to have a good time. Would You, you want to trip on mushrooms? 
Hell yeah, we'd like to trip on mushrooms. What are you selling? A quad for $70. I was like, that's a hell of a deal. I had just done mushrooms for the first time three days prior. We take these mushrooms home. Quad for four of you? Huh? A quad a for quarter. four of you? What are you saying? A quarter for four of you? Uh, it was it was three of us. And three of you, okay. Three of us. We bought the quarter for, or no, half ounce. I don't know. I got a quarter for seventy dollars. Yeah, we got a half ounce split. Oh, okay, because I was gonna say if you don't do uh, if you don't do at least an eighth, you're not doing mushrooms. I'm glad you uh, you're a stickler for details. Anyways, too late to do them that night when we got back. I tell tell my friends back Wise home. Wise move. They drive three hours next weekend. We all sit around. We split these mushrooms. We sit there for an hour and a half, and nothing happens. This oh. man, that's his hustle. He sat there and he sold his portobellas. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I love when Pat feigns. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> so, really sorry about that. Let's Ooh. get to Anastasia shopping. Now, guys, are we talking about Bravo's Below Deck? We absolutely are. Now, guys, I, you know, you love hate with Anastasia, but this is a beautiful move. This is what Mila had so wrong. Mm -hmm. You were in the Mediterranean. Take a couple hours, go to a farmer's market, and buy incredible ingredients if you're not that great of a chef make the ingredients sing if they're good ingredients it's going to taste beautiful so now we get a great line from colin you know when june's talking to him and he's like you can ask anyone anything any questions you've got just fire them off except to me because i don't know anything oh wow he nailed it Hey, guys. There goes Pat Fainan again. How did that clip not make the intro of the show? I mean, it was so good. I mean, uh, I laughed. I, I Pat, asked are you, guys, you okay? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm wonderful. Seemed a little bit too enthusiastic about that line. Well, it was really funny. I remember when I made you guys rewind it back three times. I'm like, did, See, you see this is what I thought, because that didn't happen. That didn't happen. I think he's dripping in sarcasm. Because I think he is. Because we like the line, but he, I mean... Oh, he you don't think that, he liked it that much? I, I, I think his point is, hey, Colin, if that's your fucking highlight, <laughs> you need to go back to the drawing board, all right? You're yeah. not having a great season. Go back to the ha-ha room. Take those stand-up classes, okay? Ha-ha cafe. Yeah, ah. so anyways, uh, the crew lands. Uh, here is where the Queen of Versailles steps her big, big, big uh, calloused fat toes on the... Uh, Ship, I don't know what it's called. Uh, not a yeah. fan. Not a fan of these people at all. Uh, Jackie is a rude bitch, and not like the fun kind, like Rihanna. She's a rude bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, we all talked about this, but it does seem like the Xanax is not worn off yet from the flight. Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna say I agree with you there, Dilly. She's on some mm -hmm. pills are good. <laughs> a couple uh, quick things. Do not ever say, for me, every day is a holiday. This is your life. This is not an intro to a Real Housewives episode. Also, don't ask if there's an elevator. Lug your ass up those steps. You could use it. And also, don't ever say your house is so big that you have to use cell phones to communicate. Oh, and also, don't ever take your deceased daughter's diaries and publish them for profit. You psycho, you rude bitch. I really want to reiterate that last one. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. And I, was, I would say maybe if the house was a little smaller, your daughter would still be alive today. Oh, yucky from you, Pat. I think it's a great metaphor for the distance in their relationship. Yep. It's almost like F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote it down or something. All right, so um, she asks for her bags to be unpacked. Um, she goes up to the to the bridge and asks for this, and this th this fucking psychotic passive aggression. She says she feels like she's missing out on something because she has to be there. Shut the fuck up. Go drink. Do you really need all of your stuff unpacked right at this very moment? I don't think there's enough stewardesses in the world that could handle her baggage. <laughs> I thought God, of it in the moment. I, I wish you guys could see Nick right now. I thought of it in the Gleaming. moment. <laughs> nice. Holy oh, so smokes. Good. Oh, nice. Hey, let me say this. You know, uh, I often uh, <laughs> feel like the, 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 the people that work on this boat aren't doing a good job, and these people pay so much that you yeah. need to like bend over hand and foot to make sure they are taken care of. There's something about this queen of her side lady that's just... 
got in my craw that I, I don't want them to help her at all. Right. Typically, any other guest would come and say, hey, unpack our shit. I'd be like, yeah, go do it. Come on. They're paying like 60 grand or something. But this one, I feel like she should be playing a little bit yeah. cooler. Like, like, what is with the, and I, the fear of the FOMO? Hey, bitch, you're, you're, you're 60 years old. Yeah. Uh, fear of missing out. Hey, why don't you go in your daughter's room the last two years before she died and talk to her? Maybe you could have like found out what was upsetting her in her life. Oh, I'm worried about my friends outside. Oh, like we haven't talked on the plane ride over, on the cab ride over. Now we need a cocktail. What, 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 what are you missing out on? And also, I have a, a tough time reconciling um, my because I agree with you. We've always said like they're paying so much money for this. The service should be so much better. But they they really do milk the cost of this experience and i have a problem with it i shouldn't Mm -hmm. because they're paying an exorbitant amount of money but the demands i would perceive as unreasonable though they're not i think it's just because i don't like her because she murdered her daughter i'd like to agree with you but i think i'd get real weird with it (laughs) clip my toenails (laughs) just one (laughs) now walk away keep them for the length of the charter and give them back no, we drink were... them in a stew. Okay. Drink them in a stew. All right. Uh, let's go to un- uh, let's go to lunch. Uh, uninspired. Very uninspired. I uh, my note was one word, two syllables. Basic. Yeah, I mean, you know, there is something to be said for making all of these from scratch, but yeah, maybe because we're, maybe we're a little jaded. You know, we get a lot of this kind of food. Maybe it seems a little bit more basic to us than it would to normal. We are in Glendale, California. It is the American capital of Mediterranean food. Yeah, I wish you didn't say where we are. Why? It's just so embarrassing. <laughs> we're in the so American capital of Mediterranean food. I, I had better tabbouleh at kebab way. We're at a different meal, aren't we? No. no. They oh. had tabbouleh and Greek salad and oh, baba nice. ganoush and hummus and eggplant. And um, fried calamari. Give me a fucking break. Yeah, here's the thing. The chicken, the hummus, the baba, <laughs> the tabbouleh, the Greek salad, maybe the eggplant was used for the baba. Um, where's the calamari coming from? I feel like you just threw that in there. Yeah. Wait for that heifer to get peckish. Then throw the calamari out. She's going to want it. <laughs> Save that squid. <laughs> You know so much about food, or at least the uh, ability to talk like you know so much about food. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they love for lo- uh, excuse me. So they love the lunch and ask what's for dinner, and this is where we get what you called mint jelly gate. <laughs> I did not. I, w- I wanted. I, did. Uh-huh. I wanted stricken from the record. I did not call it that. Uh, we've got mint I jelly. I want it on record that I didn't call it that. I want it stricken from the record that Dylan said I called it that. <laughs> we've got mint jelly gate, as Nick said. Uh, you can't just... We, Strike it. She's asking for mint jelly. Um, now, this cotillion-raised moron would be asking for <laughs> mint jelly with her lamb. Listen, I get it. A nice chutney, a mint jelly... It's, I'm not understanding any of these words. What you know? Cotillion, mint jelly. What was the other? Uh, chutney. <laughs> yeah, chutney. Chutney. <laughs> D- Dylan, I, with respect to how these people <laughs> feel about the food, how much does old money rich people, if they were to watch this, hate new money? <laughs> evaluating the cuisine in front right, of them, right? They'd be so disappointed, right? Well, old money, I, I agree, has a certain. Uh, Certain amount of, of class, a quiet contempt for the poor, not an a, not a, not a, a contempt shouted aloud all the time, uh, like a disgusting um, uh, person that would murder their daughter. Um, I was going to say maybe this happened earlier. I know you touched on Colin and June talking, but it just seems like those are the only two people bonding on the boat. Or uh, Colin with June, you know, this is his only friend. I thought you were going to do a a you know loose change type tin foily thing mm. where you. Th- thought that i thought this was going to be your take seems like you know uh, one could reason that colin is is globbing on to her because he sees this as an opportunity to uh start anew with someone i don't think that he's getting uh, a lot out of the other relationships and i think he's seeing this girl as a blank canvas i don't think that he has enough foresight to think 
oh, if I'm friends with her, I'll get more camera time. I'll come across as better. But I do think that he's he's looking at her as a as a trampoline for uh, happier days. That's hmm. why that's why he's like, oh, Hannah, giving you a hard time. Why don't you come cry on this shoulder? You know, you know. She's <laughs> like, no, actually, Hannah's been fine. She hasn't actually talked to me enough. That's kind of the problem right now. Yeah, hmm. he's like. I'll kill you, bitch. <laughs> okay. Hey, Colin, we definitely won't be seeing you on the next season of Met. I know that for sure. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine his uh, agent uh, negotiating that contract? All right, Colin, hey, no, no, we're good. His He'll agent. do it for free. <laughs> no, no, his agent, his agent just has no idea what he's doing. He's like, he's not going to be on your network unless he gets his own spinoff. <laughs> right. His agent is like a 19-year-old USC student <laughs> who's doing this because he's overly ambitious. Um, okay. Dinner's coming up, I guess. It's daytime, but as they're prepping, all this fucking blow-up doll bit shows up. These plastic dolls show up. Apparently, it's right. for her son that actually isn't her uh, her blood. The, I'm talking about the queen of her son. Stepson, yeah. It's his, this guy, her husband's been married to multiple like beauty pageant queens. He's shit out a ton of kids. He's got nine with her. I mean, eight. Wow. Wow. That was great math, Pat. So um, I noticed something here with the blow-up dolls. Mm. Very unnerving. Not the blow-up dolls, but I think that they are indicative of something weird going on. There's one guy and like four or five girls. It's him and these other women. Mm-hmm. It just seems strange that he wouldn't have, I don't know, a buddy come along, an associate come along. Like, are they mixing it up? Are they all taking a bite? Hmm. Interesting. It's taking me a little bit to take this in because I didn't think about it in the moment. But now that you say it, I think he is running through all those sisters of his. Yeah. I I did quotation marks. Well, uh, actually, gentlemen, uh, the way they set this up at the uh, in the charter meeting, uh, the preference sheet meeting, uh, they had said that it is her son, who's not a real son. It's her stepson. And his wife. And his wife, and then her friends. Uh, so I don't know if he's running through all of them. I think they're all, they're all snacking. I think he's got his feet up like they're in holsters, and I think they're all coming by, having a taste. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll? Three. Tootsie Pop. Excuse me. <laughs> Fucked it up. God damn it! Okay, um, Jack and Travis. Oh, first let's get to dinner. Um, we get lamb, um, lamb lollies with uh, red cabbage and mint yogurt sauce. Very, very risky move here, Anastasia, mm-hmm. but it does, it does work. Um, at the end of the day, you just can't do jelly. Um, maybe a warning shot would be good. Maybe you say, hey, I'm really, really sorry, but we can't get you the jelly. What I'm going to do instead is a dill mint yogurt sauce, and you're going to absolutely love it. Oh. It's just like what Why you are. Why are you laughing? Not so much about food. <laughs> hey, Dill, while you're you're contemplating uh, the, the dinner service, I was wondering why this queen of Versailles is wearing that fucking sash in, huh? in, the, in the tiara. Oh, didn't didn't notice that. She wore that to dinner. Maybe because she's a narcissist and a murderous psycho. Well, I'm glad you said that. Uh, D-listers, I've noticed this. When they got like artifacts or like costumes, they take it to their fucking grave. Bob Denver, uh, famously Gilligan. Yep. Every TV appearance he did, 30 or 40 years after being on Gilligan's Island. Brought the stripes. He wore that the stripes oh. and that fucking hat huh. till they rolled him into a... A drool home. So there is Hospice. a Bob Denver. I'm sorry. This solves a little bit of a mystery for myself. Huh. In our other property, another Bachelor podcast, yeah. we were talking about celebrities who died in plane crashes. Two Bob Denvers. I'm sorry. One was a country singer. Another was a D-less the o- actor. The other one was John Denver. Is that who died in the plane crash? Oh, yeah. am I a fool right now? Yeah. So in the moment, I was like, I thought he, I thought he was combining Bob Dylan and John Denver. Well, Bob Dylan did die in a plane crash, so I understand why he got that wrong. <laughs> Gentlemen, I, will you forgive me? Uh, no. I think we're gonna have to fact check that last Dylan note. Uh, but uh, what that I don't trust Patrick. Anyways, I keep bringing up stuff that should not be on no, this we've episode. Got to get back to it. Uh, Jack and Travis, they are conjuring up the double date towards the end of dinner. Um, you know, everybody's kind of tidying up. and I did call this double date gate. I love a nice rhyme. <laughs> that supersedes your hatred for the term gate. Huh? It's true. It's true. Double Alliterations are magnificent. Um, 
Jack and Travis call the two girls up to the uh, to the bridge. Giddy as fuck. And, uh, you know, they've agreed upon a plan. They're going to ask them both on a double date. Now, you can't trust the filthy scows that are work, and you can't trust them to remember five words. <laughs> because he says, Travis and I wanted to know if uh, you, Asia, would go on a date with me. Oof. Travis, uh, poor, poor Trav is sitting there like, what the fuck? Now we got to wait for her to say yes to you. You guys hug. Then I ask the whole thing is it's a goddamn abortion. I, I thought it was a smart move if you want camera time and to uh, get laid. Uh, because uh, I think he just forgot. I just think he's stupid. Well, no, I'm saying the whole the the whole rouge of like this. We, oh. we really care about you. We've been thinking about this. It's like very romantic. Right. It's post. It's like after work. And where are we gonna where are we gonna go on a date? Yeah. Uh, I think it's a really smart move. I don't think it's gonna. Um, I don't think it's gonna help either one of them. In my opinion. Oh no, I think Jack and Asia will make love. You think they'll close? Yeah, I think that they'll make love. I don't know about that. I don't know. I think Asia might be quite the prude, but I did find the entire thing adorable. And I actually thought it was a good move by Jack just to ask her out first. Uh, and Travis just looked like like the follower pussy. Uh, Jack, right. Jack That's looked fine. Really good. But, but uh, there was something that was agreed upon, and Jack the Filthy Scouser did not do that. I think no. he just introduced it wrong. They both, I don't think, I don't think, yeah. I don't think Travis ever wanted Jack to ask Hannah out for him. So, I like, think, do it one at a time and no, just don't say it weird. No, I disagree. I think they wanted to uh, pitch a double date. Now, guys, I, I apologize. At the last 15 minutes of every episode, I start checking out. Did yeah. both ladies say yes? Yep. Oh, okay. And Hannah basically said, like, oh, yeah, I guess yeah, this will be fun. And, you know, Pat, if you hadn't been in the bathroom sneaking booze into a can of LaCroix, I think mm. you might have picked up on that. And once again, if that's true, then we've got to have a talk after the show. Okay, so while, Wine in the can, while an this is going on, uh, hilarious, hilarious moment from June. Um, hammering cake. Just fucking hammering cake. Oh. Uh, um... Uh, I love the move. I, oh. I, I like to see it. Um, I thought that that was very, very charming of her. And uh, she's clearly baked out of her goddamn mind. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, Cole, hold on, hold on. There's never a better time to I'm pound to hold on. cake and, and you're drunk or stoned at like midnight or one in the morning. Right. Uh, this is the best time to eat. Food never tastes fucking better. And, and, and you yeah. you can't blame her. That's why drive throughs are like, they're, they're two hours where they make the most money is between 11.30 and 1.30. The two hours when they make the most money is when you roll up to the window, you, Patrick, mm -hmm. and then when you leave. Because when Pat is wasted and he goes to a drive through it takes an exorbitant amount of time to complete the order. Um, he rattles through pretty much everything they've got on the menu. I, too, like to sample a nice fast food menu. Uh, their different type of offerings is really what makes them fun. It keeps me coming back. Let's just do this really quickly. If you were to have a, a, a great time exploring the menu of, let's say, a Jack in the Box. I don't know Jack in the Box that Okay, well. McDonald's. Uh, uh, no, that's boring. Uh, Taco Bell. I mean, I, w I want them all. Anything you've ever seen a commercial for. I want a cheesy gordita crunch. Okay. I, w I want a crunch wrap supreme. Okay. I'm going to get their regular just soft tacos. Their hard tail tacos. Okay. A loaded potato, potato griller, which doesn't get enough commercial right, right, time, right. No, to be no, honest. No, it doesn't. Um, I mean, all of it. Yeah. Don't sleep on the Mexican pizzas, dude. You have to sleep on the Mexican pizza. Oh, that dollar menu's got that thing cheese taco rolls. A lot of people like these Mexican pizzas. They're overrated. How about the Taco Bell uh, Grande? The nachos, sorry. Okay, so the next morning, uh, Jack... I had one more thing to say about his prime time, uh, yeah. that two-hour window for fast yeah. food. That is exactly why one time in 2015, when I was Ubering uh, uh, around Los Angeles... You mean driving an Uber like Pat does for a living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Driving an Uber uh, <laughs> like Pat does for a living. Uh, I picked up a, a couple of uh, nice young ladies who turned out to be lesbians. Not really important to this story, except possibly... In, uh, explains their anger they asked to go, <laughs> they asked to go through in and out drive through at about 2 a.m and there was a, a line of about 14 cars as there are right and it was this was back when uber surge they've really taken control of that surge it doesn't really get out of hand but i'm telling you this is like a five to eight time surge all right there is no way i'm wow. taking you through this drive through right this is when i make my money i refuse i said oh i, I said i can't take you through the drive through i can drive you off 
Um, I can wow. do it over. I can t- they were irate. Daddy they, needed to go get that Skrilla. They gra- yeah, Daddy, Daddy needed to go get that Skrilla. Your payday was on Sunday, so all the, this was my last time to accumulate hours. Daddy needed to hit that track. Daddy needed to hit that track. So the point is, I told him to get out of my car. <laughs> They ended up grabbing all my waters out of the back seat as no. like a protest. Slap my slap my real view mirrors. Luckily they're on hinges, so I didn't really do any damage. But the they side were side mirrors. They were angry. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 You want to know why, Nick? They need some fucking cock in there. Yeah. Oh, good for you. Good for you. Good I think for it you. It's so it would have been so much softer if you just said dick. They need to. I disagree. I don't think it would have been softer. They need to be dicked down. I think your philosophy stands. I think it's equally as offensive and purposefully offensive. And anybody listening, please know that that that, (laughs) Pat, why are you red faced right now? (laughs) This is disgusting. What you're doing? You're trying to get us one star reviews. You're like Milo Yiannopoulos right now. It's a (laughs) filthy fucking thing to do. I'm sorry that happened to you, Nick. What a gauntlet. What a tale. The point is, Pat's right about that two-hour primetime window for fast food. Yeah, so um, next morning, Jackie comes into the galley and says, um, you know, a lot of stuff that makes me, that made me hate her even more. Um, Arguably worse than killing your daughter, saying that you're a trendsetter. <laughs> she said she's a trendsetter. Yeah, she said, oh. please boil the quail eggs. If I have one, they're going to want one. Oh, right. uh, you know, I'm kind of a trendsetter. People didn't wear fanny packs until I started wearing them. You self important heifer. You fucking murderous bitch. You should please put yourself down voluntarily for the sake of the human race as quickly as possible. Do it the same way your daughter did. Everybody knows that Joe Rogan brought back the fanny pack, and if you disagree, I'll fight you. Whew, you Oof. think we're going to get one star tonight? No. no. We're definitely not hitting hardcore new blow deck fans. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think, think so. we're their cup of tea. I don't think so. Um, so, what was the confusion between June and Anna? There was this weird, like, forks. I, I wish it was more. I uh, didn't understand what happened. They were setting the table and she couldn't find the forks. Oh, uh, you. Was- I thought it was about like packing the bag or something like where. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you are you when they're actually packing for lunch? Yeah. Because was... did you discuss breakfast yet? It was basic as well. Oh no no no. Uh, June just was kind of trying to make conversation because I felt like she's she hasn't been Hannah hasn't been attentive to her. Mm-hmm. At least that's how she's feeling. Mm-hmm. So she was just like so like. Yeah, we got the bag packed, you know, the bag's packed. And Hannah's like, cool, get the fuck out of my face, you weirdo. Right. Essentially. And Hannah said she has strange energy, um, which I get because she's freaking high out of her mind. She probably doesn't know how to behave towards a new uh, superior when you're that big. People can pick up on paranoia. She's high. She's paranoid. Yep. She's, she's yep. like, am I doing it right? Am I doing it right? Yeah. It's, it's not good. Um, all right, so let's- She's no Jack. So- um, We've got a little bit of an audible here. Another audible from a uh, from a rude bitch. Uh, Jackie says that she wants to get going in twenty minutes to Ez, not the hour and a half that they had planned for, because they have to cook meals and prep the boat, and you know, just have a Paloma and lay up and tan that hide of yours. Now, I don't like the Queen of Versailles. Obviously, I definitely don't like what she did to her uh, oldest daughter, but. Yeah. I believe that she put that out there as a request, uh, not uh, a demand. Well, when 11.45 came around, it seemed like the demand was rather concrete. They were being rather impatient, and they wanted to get off the boat right then and there. So y- th- this is this passive-aggressive thing, like, hey, do you think we could possibly do that? And then when it doesn't happen, they treat it like it was a directive that was um, agreed upon. That's Horrible that's- people. Mm. horrible people um at the risk of capsizing they do get jackie and her friends to the shore um and then (laughs) colin has to go back to gather ingredients excuse me to gather ingredients now you know who helps him every single girl on that boat you know who doesn't help him jack jack and travis I'll, uh, oh, they're uh, they're having fun. They're going down the slide. You don't. They, look, it's crazy. You owe it to that slide to use it. 
I mean, that that is way underused. At what point do we stop saying, like, they're fun and start getting a little cheesed off? Like, I don't know why this is okay. I feel like everybody gets leashes that are way too long on this boat. Mila should have been fired at the end of the second episode, and Travis and Jack should have a stern fucking talking to. It would be good television, and it would improve the workflow of the boat. Dylan, this is where I'm involving my personal feelings about the charter guests and 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 my excitement about their unhappiness. Sound emotional, yeah. That that I'm I'm happy that the boys are having fun right now. Had had I given a damn about the actual charter guests, I'd be. I think their behavior would be reprehensible. It is reprehensible. Um, all right, so they take a hike to Ez. It's very, very difficult. I don't know how Jackie made it up, um, but it seems that we've forgotten the cutlery, um, and oh, that boy. is quite a cliffhanger that we're going oh. to end on. What's going to happen? What What could possibly happen? Um, before we wrap up, I'll be damned if I forget it again. We've got a fan favorite segment where we uh, we talk about well. I don't really understand the segment. Can you kind of break it down, Nick? It's it's your uh, it's your joint. Well, you haven't even told him what it's called. Errors and omissions. I'll explain errors and omissions. It's places where we erred and things we omitted. Okay. And uh, we've got a big one this week. Only one, but it is a big one. It's Uh-oh. a doozy. Um, we, of course, I have no idea in what context brought up the classic movie, Bring It On. I said, Burr, it's cold in here. There must be some clovers in the atmosphere. I mean, I, I know where you're going, and I'm ashamed. My tail's between my legs. We all know that the cheer team that Gabrielle Union captained yep. was not the Cloverfield Clovers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although in the moment, I didn't know that. I was like, that's pretty funny Whoa, that were, they did that. Were they the, 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 the cheer squad for the city that was ravaged by T.J. Miller's bad acting and that monster? No, <laughs> they were from the city that was ravaged by uh, poverty Systemic and gang racism, violence. Yeah. Yeah. Of what? <laughs> Anyways, it was the East Compton Clover. Oh, oh my God! See what he did? Oh, dunce! Put a dunce cap on my head. A dunced cap. A dunce cap. Kirsten Dunst. Oh wow! Or a, a douche cap. Eliza Dushku. She was in that? Oh, yeah. Big time. Big oh, she crush was so hot on her. In that. Big mm. crush on her when I was a young boy. That dunce cap thing might be the most clever thing I've ever said. It might be, yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad we ended on a high note. Guys, we are going to be back next week. Remember, hop in those iTunes ratings and reviews. Give us the stars you feel appropriate. I know that after this evening, it may be difficult to give us five, uh, but please do. I could give a shit about the Another Below Deck podcast ranking. <laughs> give us ones if you want them. We need another review segment and one. Ones are so fun to read on air because of how angry you are. Uh, follow me and Nick on Twitter at Dylan Pete <laughs> Wren and Real Nick Davis. And what? I just love how you give these plot like what? Know, follow all of a sudden you're into Twitter, so you start giving these plot. I'm not mad at it, but I, it's like we gotta plug our Twitter. I've, I've always wanted following. We've never plugged our following. All of a sudden Dylan gets into his following. I'm following. plugging your Twitter too. What I the know, hell? but that's the thing. It's only because you wanted yours. That's the end of the episode. Uh we'll see you guys next week. Remember, follow me, Dylan Pete Ren on Twitter. Follow um, di- follow Pat on Instagram at Patrick Dude Show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying goodbye. Nick, say goodbye. Goodbye. Pat, say goodbye. All right.